is The Herd. Wherever you may be and however you may be listening, we're on iHeartRadio, Fox Sports Radio, and FS1 in Los Angeles. Joy Taylor's joining me. I thought Skip won that Julian Edelman argument. That was a big last 10 minutes for Skip. Shannon does not agree with me. It's great having everybody in today. Um, Joy, how are you? I'm great. Good morning. Look Happy at Friday. Your, you look like you should be going to a Keith Urban concert. Look I look at country. you. You look hip. Yeah. This is very like business like. I look you... like a librarian or something. I, I did, no librarians at my school look like that. Um, that. I guess I could toss some cowboy boots on it. But you're not <laughs> going to a concert. You're going to like an exclusive. Oh, I, stop. I, I want the background story on this on Monday because this is we're, we're, we're being fooled here. <laughs> well, let's start the show with the Dallas Cowboys. They're having <laughs> camp and Zeke isn't there. Right. OK, so I have kind of a rule in life. I'm just going to this is kind of behind the curtain. I won't waste too much time on it. What do I buy in life? I buy things that I think are growing in value. I'll buy a home. I'll buy uh, uh, land. I'll buy a stock because I feel over time they're growing in value. I tend to have a theory on life that I lease my fun. I don't buy a boat. I just lease it. I'll go and pay for the day. I lease my golf clubs. I lease, lease my skis, jet skis. I lease my fun because they're declining assets. Once you get a jet ski, an hour later, it's worth less. Uh, once you buy a car, you drive it off the lot. It's worth less. So I tend to buy things that are accelerating in value, and I lease things that are declining over time in value. That's just kind of my theory. I don't think it's revolutionary. I think that's what a, what a lot of people in, uh, you know do with wealth management and with their money, right? I feel the same way about the Dallas Cowboys. Dak, to me, is the land, the stock, the house. He's an accelerating asset. Zeke is a declining asset fun asset i would pay dak dak is a quarterback dak rarely gets hit that's why dak can always play dak is mature dak will get more mature dak is good dak is getting better in eight years dak may well be twice the quarterback he is today he is an ascending asset I would pay Dak. Even if I got to pay a little too much than I want for the house and a little higher price than I want to buy the land for and a little more than I want to pay my quarterback, I think Dak Prescott is, is an ascending asset. Now, we can argue about the price on the house. We can argue about the price on the quarterback. I wish Dak would take 29, not 32. But don't kid yourself. He is an ascending asset. Zeke is not. Zeke is closer to the car. I'm not saying you don't need transportation, but the minute you get it off the lot, it's worth less. Zeke will never be better than today. Every hit, he's a little less of a running back. And sometimes I have a test in life, say it out loud. Immature, running back, demanding money, two years out from a contract at a position that's not trending particularly well. I think it's an easy decision. I got a bunch of people to pay in Dallas. I'm paying the quarterback first. I'm paying the pass rusher second. They've already paid him. I think I'm paying Amari Cooper in 2019 wide receiver third. Then I'm paying Jalen Smith, the linebacker. Great kid. Uh, outstanding position. You need athletic linebackers. Byron Jones. That's how I feel about Zeke. Nick Wright talked about this this morning. There's a lot of mouths to feed and Zeke is not doing his so-called friends any good here cutting in line. Dak Prescott has made less than $3.5 million in his entire football career. That is less money than Zeke is scheduled to make this season on a contract that he thinks has him underpaid. I do find it interesting what potential locker room politics, even if they're able to keep it quiet, happen if Zeke attempts to cut the line almost where Amari's got one year left Dak's got one year left and has never been paid Zeke's got two years left and was a top five pick people tell you who they are Maya Angelou used to say this believe them Johnny Manziel kept telling you in college here's what I am me guy immature not a guy you want to build a franchise around and Cleveland's like can't hear you Patriots took Johnny Manziel off their board. Colts took him off their board. Cleveland's like, we can't hear you. We, we can't see what you're doing. Zeke's telling you who he is. Immature. Me over we. I mean, Dak Prescott's got more leverage right now. He's a quarterback in the quarterback league. He's like, I'm just going to play. We'll, we'll get it figured out. I mean, it's become a wide receiver league more than a running back league. Amari Cooper's like, I'll play. Uh-oh, all good.
They asked yesterday, they asked Jalen Smith, who, by the way, is an unbelievable linebacker for Dallas, in a game now that you need athletic guys in space. Linebackers matter. You know what Jalen Smith said when they asked him about uh, Zeke's contract? He said, quote, I'm here. People tell you who they are. You got to ask yourself when you're paying people, what's their position? How's the position trending? Um, are they long-term employees? Do you want them in the building for five years? Do they play well with others? Are they we over me? Don't get me wrong. They're pro athletes. I get they want the money. But if you're asking me today, deserving contracts before Zeke, I'm paying Dak first. He's the quarterback. I'm paying Demarcus Loris second. They already got him. I'd pay Mari Cooper because there's clear signs that Amari makes Dak a better player. I think I pay the linebacker, Jalen Smith. I don't have to pay Van Der Esch for three years. I'm paying Jalen. And the Cowboys were looking for a corner for about eight years since Deion Sanders, maybe 12. They finally got one. Pay the damn kid. It's the NFL. You got to have one world class. Even the Patriots play, pay Stephon Gilmore. Even the Patriots pay a corner. You've been looking for 15 years for a corner. You got to pay Byron Jones. Great kid, great corner at a position that's increasingly popular. I'll just keep doubling down on this. I think I've doubled down on this nine times this week. You keep telling me you want to, you want Zeke, and it's an easy decision. I think it is easy. I'm paying Dak, Demarcus, Amari, Jalen, Byron. I'm not paying Zeke. You can get a haul for him. Pay ascending assets, not declining assets. Lease your fun. Dak over Zeke all day. Let's shift to this. You know, it would be nice to come to work every day and have a staff that was supportive and not working against me. And this morning, the staff goes out, Oh, look, Baker Mayfield, odds to win the MVP. <laughs> That's so funny. Uh, first of all, it's voted on. So, of course, Baker has a shot because Baker's got a better story. This is what MVPs have become. NBA MVP, it's not about value. It's about stats. It's, it's called the MVP, not the MSP. But Russell Westbrook won it. Derrick Rose won it. Really, Derrick Rose valuable. Has there ever been a minute of his life he was more valuable than LeBron James in a basketball court? The MVP is voted on by writers who like stories and romance over reality. Of course Baker Mayfield's going to get a ton of votes. I would be shocked. As long as Cleveland has a winning record, one game over 500, I will be shocked if Baker doesn't finish top two in the MVP. His story's better. Now, if you're asking me who I think the MVP the last five to ten years in the NFL, there's three players in this league that I think are way more valuable than everybody else. And again, the word is valuable. Andrew Luck is number one. He's gotten teams to the AFC championship, bad rosters to a conference championship. Number two would be Aaron Rodgers. He's gotten bad defenses to a conference championship. Third is Russell Wilson. He's gotten horrible offensive lines into the playoffs. Those are the most valuable players. Patrick Mahomes is gifted, but he's got Andy Reid, fastest player on the NFL, the best tight end, a very good offensive line. He's great, and don't get me wrong, there's some value there. But Andrew Luck, Aaron Rodgers, Russell Wilson are the most valuable players in the NFL. But I'll give you an example of why Baker's going to finish top two in the MVP voting. I'm not saying he's going to win it. It's going to be top two because people vote stories. Here's a great example. Usually, if you have great receivers and you have great backs and you have great tight ends, people would say, well, you know, of course, of course they're good. I mean, of course. Baker Mayfield has the first or second best young tight end in football, the best wide receiving core, easily the best three backs combined. But he's going to be the rare guy that gets credit for that. Why? Rookie head coach, downtrodden Cleveland. Baker's a short two-time walk-on. It's a great story. Baker's a great story. And MVPs are about stories. I mean, really, you've ever thought Russell Westbrook was more valuable than LeBron James? In, in, in where? Outside of one city, where in the NBA? But he was a better story. Kevin Durant left him, triple-double, even though it's not a stat award. Okay. Take Jared Goff. Jared Goff doesn't have a wide receiving core as good right now as Cleveland. Robert Woods is excellent. He's a number two. 
Cooper Cup is excellent. He's a number two. Brandon Cooks is excellent. He's a number three. You can't name the Rams tight end. What about Todd Gurley? What about him? Couldn't play at the end of last year. Jared Goff has never once even sniffed MVP talk. Like Baker, he's young. He's 24 and 7, 60 touchdowns, 19 picks, and a passer rating over 101 and got to the Super Bowl when his best receiver was hurt and his best running back couldn't play. Not a sniff. Why? Because Jared Goff is tall and didn't have to walk on. And the Rams are in big, rich, greedy L.A. And Sean McVay is a genius, although the Super Bowl disproved that. MVPs are about narratives, and sports writers vote on MVPs, so they vote for stories. Jared Goff's numbers are absurd in his first couple of years. His first year in the NFL, it was man overboard. The fact that he didn't crumble is amazing. He's done nothing but win and get to Super Bowls. Nothing. No crickets. Baker's got better tight end. Baker's got better receivers. Baker's got better back. But it's Cleveland. It's Freddie Kitchens. He's a rookie head coach. We don't... Baker will absolutely be top two in the MVP voting as long, as long as Cleveland has a winning record. And I predict them to be nine and seven. So I'm not shocked at all. Uh, it'd be nice if my staff wasn't trying to get me worked up every day. And I walk in there and I'm like, hey, free coffee and donuts for everybody. Hey, look at here. Look at here. Time to make some changes. Fury 80. All right. Great to have you in today. Uh, packed. Uh, I am going to see Keith Urban tomorrow. Pretty amazing concert. You're going to the world's hottest destination outside of Yemen. You're going to Phoenix. <laughs> Our weekends are yes. divergent. Uh, Joy Taylor is joining me. Uh, Urban Meyer, Mark Schlereth, Jason McIntyre today. Coming up next, I've been tough on Mike Tomlin, but why he deserves the contract extension, that's coming up. Listen, before you travel this summer, you need to get a bag from Away Travel. Okay, they got. I'm carrying mine today. We got the aluminum carry-on luggage. The stuff is fantastic. It's a company in Newport, California. I'd never heard about it until about six months ago. Every suitcase has a hidden removable laundry bag, dirty and clean clothes separated. A TSA-approved lock, everything's safe. Four spinner wheels, quiet in the airport. Carry-ons perfectly sized, goes in the overhead storage. Plus, you can order their carry-ons with a removable TSA-approved battery. Yeah. Goes through security. So you never get stuck at the airport with a dead phone which st stinks. All you have to do, go to awaytravel.com slash Colin. Awaytravel.com slash Colin. Suitcase, get it for 100 days. Don't love it, return it, no questions asked. And you'll get 20 bucks off if you put in the promo code Colin. That's awaytravel.com slash Colin. Promo code Colin, 20 bucks off. This, this luggage is absolutely fantastic.